I'm Kimberly Klima, editor of Pet Food Processing, and today on Processor Perspective, I'm speaking with Lanny Vigut, owner and CEO of Carnivore Meat Company, a manufacturer of premium quality raw, frozen, and freeze-dried pet food and treats based in Green Bay, Wisconsin. You can read more about the company in the July issue of Pet Food Processing. Thanks for taking the time for this conversation today, Lanny. Thanks for having me, Kimberly. Appreciate it. So let's start with the name of your company, Carnivore Meat, and your flagship brand, Vital Essentials. How do both of these names communicate your company's mission and purpose? Yeah, I appreciate the question. Uh, so Carnivore Meat Company was was created, uh, actually my wife and I were walking down the street we trying to figure out what we were going to call our, our business. And one thing that was very apparent is that we were a meat shop for dogs and cats. Uh, everything we produced was for dogs, for cats, real meat, uh, and, and dogs and cats are carnivores. So it, we, as we, as we started playing with the carnivore and meat, uh, it, it just, it just uh, kind of rolled off the tip of the tongue and carnivore meat company was born, uh, Actually, as we were walking down a sidewalk one day, waiting for our daughter's softball game to start. And with Vital Essentials, uh, very similar, right? Our, the, the, the food we produce uh, is, is vital to the health and wellness of dogs and cats. Um, even in the, in the wild, um, when you look at the alpha males and alpha, alpha females in a, in a wolf pack, right? They, they need the best ultimate, most vital nutrition, which is typically the meat, the organs, and, and some bone when they take down prey. So it was, it's a vital element of what we do. And also it's the, the essentialness, uh, the, the, the nutrition, the vitamins, the minerals, uh, the, the limited ingredients, and the, the limited uh, processing in, in raw pet food and, and frozen pet food. So uh, Vital Essentials uh, was born from, uh, from that need. So your business is in the freeze dried sector of pet food primarily. So as a pioneer in this sector, how are you helping to build that segment of the market, both for your company and for others involved? Yeah, we believe that, first of all, our category is growing at, uh, you know, in the mid 30% annually, year over year. And, uh, you know, there's a number of, of, of awesome brands and, and we're one of them. And there's other, also other folks that want to be engaged, right? And we also, we understand that, you know, Vital Essentials, we're unable to really take, to take care of the entire world's uh, capacity and demand for frozen and freeze-dried pet food. Uh, so as we look uh, to our own brand and helping others, we believe that the more products that are out in the marketplace, uh, the more frozen and freeze-dried products that are on the shelf at retail, uh, the more the, the category gains credibility, the more consumers have access and, and, and awareness uh, to our category. So last summer, just 10 years or so after you founded Carnivore Meat Company, you broke ground on a sizable expansion, a 235,000 square foot Greenfield Manufacturing Facility and Corporate Headquarters in Green Bay. So by the end of this year, that plan is going to be up and running. How did you come to the decision to build such a big expansion? And how can you help fill that new plant with product? Yes, it's kind of interesting. <clears throat> we've been we've been expanding since we started, right? So Going just you know going back to 2010, we we started with with a facility, and, and at the time we we it was 20,000 square feet, and we said, what are we going to do with all this? We said, let's maybe should we rent it out? Right. Seriously, we we didn't uh, at the time in, in 2010, we didn't need all of the space, uh, and then we added on, and then we filled our space, and then we added on. We've we've had I would say uh, at least five expansions to our current facility. And, and most recently we purchased our neighbor, that's 30,000 square feet, just adjacent to us, uh, 
we, we acquired that property in, in 20, uh, 2021. And last year we invested more uh, capital to actually put those two, we bridged those two facilities together uh, to make one very large uh, frozen and freeze dried uh, manufacturing facility. As I talked about earlier, the, the, the category continues to grow and grow and grow. And uh, one of our one of the keys to our success has been uh, twofold. Number one is we build our own freeze dryers. Right? So building our own freeze dryers, we maintain uh, strategic a strategic uh, open amount of capacity that we have available every day. So whether it's our clients in our brand or other clients uh, that have their own brand that, that want and need some help, we're always in a position to say yes. Right. So, but as we continue to grow and continue to grow, uh, what we learned back in 2021 is, and after we purchased the, 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 the neighboring facility, uh, there's just a very, very limited amount of, of, of facilities, existing facilities. You know, we looked around the green Bay at, you know, to buy something else to, to make additional acquisitions. And there just wasn't the facilities that were the size uh, or, or had the infrastructure that we needed to continue to grow. And to stay consistent uh, with our a part of our culture um, is uh, we always want to find ways to say yes. And part of that is maintaining capacity, having that available open capacity. So because there was no room, uh, there was no other locations uh, in the greater Green Bay area, we decided that we would need to build. And then as we began, we began building, uh, we began looking at different technology, uh, robotics, uh, um, automated equipment, robots that work alongside of people. Uh, the, it continued to get bigger and bigger, not just to be big, but really to, uh, we're building it. It's a generational building. It's going to be able to not only handle uh, very appropriately and, and with high degree of technology and, uh, and automation, what we need today and over the next few years, but, but very long, long term. Uh, it's a 28 acre site and it's 235,000 square feet, but we can, it's built today, uh, constructed today, so we can uh, basically flip that whole footprint and, and double facility at a, at a time and date in the future. Well, that's just incredible to be able to grow into such a large facility, but then even have future plans and future opportunity for even more growth. So just along those lines and sort of to wrap this up, I'm going to ask you to sort of pull out your crystal ball and tell me what you think the future holds for your company and also for the freeze-dried pet food segment? Fair question. And, and I get that asked that often. I think that the trajectory that the frozen and freeze-dried uh, pet space is on is, is, is very, very bright. To invest 200 in, in, in a 235,000 square foot building, right there, we have a high degree of confidence that this is going to continue. And I think there's, there's another, uh, I, would, I would say quite significant, uh, maybe explosion that's gonna happen probably in the next 18 months where there's gonna be another, I think the economy's been a, a bit of a drag. And I think there's, there's we're, we're, what we're seeing is some pent up demand that will come to show, show itself real soon. Uh, you know, the, the, our, our building, uh, there's thousands of people that come into our category every day. So when we look at our building, uh, it needs to be, you know, people, people rely on us, uh, not only on our brand, but others rely on us to make sure that we have that capacity and not only the capacity, but we continue to challenge ourselves to become more efficient uh, and more effective, uh, making better use of the resources uh, that we have. I mean, our building is going to be, uh, probably the largest uh, and, and most technic uh, technologically advanced uh, facility in the world, whether it's human food or, or pet food for, for freeze drying. So we're really excited about that. 
Well, it's definitely going to be exciting to see it up and running by the end of the year and see what you all can turn it into in the years to come. So thanks a lot, Lanny, for coming here today and chatting with me and telling me a little more about the company and the Vital Essentials brand and sharing that with our audience. Thank you for having me, Kimberly. Appreciate it. And look for our cover story on Carnivore Meat Company in the July issue of Pet Food Processing.